Yay! Hello, everybody. My name is Virginia Willis. I'm a chef and cookbook author based in Atlanta, Georgia, and welcome to Cookbooks with Virginia. It is really and truly one of my favorite parts of the week. Um, each and every week, I get to interview different chefs and cookbook authors, and this week is perfect! This week, I have Lisa Steele, author of the Fresh Eggs Daily Cookbook, and we all know that eggs are a symbol of spring and easter and passover and practically every religion in the world um, has some sort of egg metaphor for birth and rebirth and i have something really fun to tell you so um in the theater you know that when people are about to go on stage they say break a leg well in cooking shows what we say is crack an egg and i'm so excited to welcome lisa she's got her own pbs series she's got this beautiful book fresh eggs daily so y'all let's welcome lisa Steele. hi hey thank you so much for joining us today thanks for having me have you heard that about crack an egg no i have not but i love that are you right? It's like perfect for you. So I know about you because I've had this beautiful copy of your book, but I would love for you to start out by telling people your story. How do you have an egg cookbook? <laughs> I don't even know. I really don't know. Um, yeah, so I am a proud fifth generation chicken keeper. I'm the, fi the fifth generation of women, no less in my family, to raise chickens that we can definitively trace back. Um, I'm sure it went back way before then, but my grandparents were chicken keepers. They had a two-story chicken barn in Massachusetts and they you know, raised the chickens for meat and for eggs. They supplied local restaurants, they supplied their own diner. So like they were the real deal. Um, and then as a kid, I lived in Massachusetts in the country. We had chickens. I did 4-H, that whole thing. And then sort of fast forward, like I went to college. I worked on Wall Street. I met my husband. I got married. I, we found ourselves in Virginia. He was stationed there. And it was 2009. It was the recession. There really weren't a ton of great jobs anyway. You know, when you're in a military area, if you're not in the military or a teacher or a nurse, there's not a lot you know out there. So I was home. I was bored. And... I wanted to get goats. I wanted to make soap and goat cheese. And I was into like the whole homestead thing. I thought it would be super fun. And my husband didn't think it would be nearly as fun. So he kind of offered with chickens. Smaller. And I was like, I had chickens as a kid. Did you not listen to any of my stories? Like I wasn't a huge fan. You know, when you're a kid, it's just chores and it's, you know, oh, I want to go to the pool. No, you have to clean the chicken coop or you have to, you know, collect eggs or whatever. And the chickens were mean and they used to peck us and all that. You're so mean. I was like, yes. <laughs> yeah, ours were super mean. So <laughs> I was like, well, I guess I'll say yes to the chickens and we'll just kind of like work on them about the goats. So we got the chickens and um, Facebook was kind of just starting and blogs were just kind of starting. So I started, you know, writing about them and answering people's questions. And I realized that I knew a lot, like I retained a lot from my childhood. And it just kind of like snowballed and grew from there. And, you know, I got my first book deal and then another book deal and another book deal. And I just kept writing books. And then I had a TV show and um, then COVID came along and they asked me to write another chicken book. And I said, you know, I don't really have anything else to say about chickens. I've been doing this for 12 years. I've written six books. I don't have a lot more to say, but all I, about raising chickens, right? Yeah. All about raising chickens, chickens and ducks and keeping them healthy and like that kind of stuff. And I said, I even wrote a kid's book. I mean, I had like covered every aspect of chickens, but I said, I really want to write a cookbook. And I had had this idea in my mind for a long time to write an egg cookbook. You know, I've been encouraging and enabling people to raise chickens for years. And now they have a ton of eggs and they don't know what to do with them. So I hired an agent and we pitched it out and Harper Collins was interested and I had a cookbook deal and ah. I spent literally spent COVID writing the book, which I'm so proud of it. I, I love how it came out. It, it's oh, like everything that I dreamed a cookbook could be and it was just really fun and it kept me from going absolutely bonkers <laughs> stuck at no, home it's true for two so years. For everybody so y'all go to my instagram feed look for the cover of this book you're going to follow the instructions there and you can win an autographed copy i love this book and it's just like i mean i think that people get they get so intimidated in the kitchen you know, there's all these like crazy recipes, uh, using all these crazy ingredients or, you know, and so many restrictions. And I think that, you know, 
you know, a lot of cooks, like some of the most difficult things to cook are actually the simplest things to cook, like to do something well, like a perfectly cooked fried egg. That's something that's a skill, right? It's something that people need to see. And speaking of, look at this. I want that so bad right now. I can't stand it. <laughs> I want to dip that bacon in that yummy yolk. Um, so let's talk about this. So COVID, you spent the whole time testing recipes and, and writing um, this beautiful book. And you pretty much, yeah. Photography is amazing. Did y'all do different? Yeah, I was thrilled. We got uh, Tina Rupp, who lives in Connecticut. I had, you know, looked at a bunch of photographers and, and their work. And one of the things that appealed to me about her was that she was in Connecticut. I'm in Maine. So I could uh -huh. actually drive down for the photo shoot, which was a great, ex I mean, we had all just been vaccinated. So it was a great excuse to get out of the house. So we had two weeks of like cooking delicious food and taking beautiful photos. And it was like nothing I've ever experienced before. You know, my other books, someone would come up and take pictures of my chickens, you know, out in the backyard. So it was completely different. Um, and Tina has worked with Mario Batali and Rachel Ray and Martha Stewart. And, you know, yeah. she's done some really big cookbooks. So the yeah. fact that, like, I, I just keep pinching myself going, is this real? Is this happening to me? Like, it's just such a alternate universe that I sort of stepped into. I mean, but I love it. I, I realized I like chickens. I love chickens. I enjoy raising them. I'm good at it, but my passion really always has been cooking. And it wasn't until I started this project that I really realized that I'm more about the eggs than the chickens. Like, is that awful to say? No, 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 no. I get it. I get it. Well, chickens, I don't know. I mean, I, I've, I had chickens once upon a time in a different part of my life and I hope to have them again. I really do, but I'm, I'm not able to now. I mean, chickens are, are interesting in that, you know, we used to sit in the backyard and just watch them and it was more entertaining mm -hmm. than television. You know what I mean? Like their little personalities. <laughs> I mean, they really are kind of like little dinosaurs running around, you know, little tiny T-Rexes looking yeah. for bugs. But all they do is eat and then <laughs> poop. poop. Yeah. I mean, my chickens are friendly now. Like, I realized as a kid, we didn't really spend time with them. We loved them when they were baby chicks. And then when they went outside, whatever, you know. But now, you know, we named them all as kids and then we forgot their names and we weren't really invested in it. But now as an adult, like you said, we'll make cocktails. We'll sit outside and watch them. They come up to us. They are like little pets and they're so friendly and so wonderful. So oh. that early experience fortunately didn't turn me off to them. Yeah, uh, so I, I do enjoy raising them. So how many chickens do you have? And, and I understand you have ducks and geese as well. Mm -hmm. We have 17 chickens, a rooster named Sherman, who was supposed to be a girl, but turned out to be a boy. Um, 10 ducks and two geese. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So I have to tell y'all, um, the reason Lisa and I are laughing because we both have on our denim shirts and I kind of thought it would be appropriate, you know, like sort of farm girl. But what also happened is that this morning I read that they're going to stop printing Martha Stewart living, uh, the magazine. And it made me really sad. And um, because I used to be the kitchen director for Martha Stewart Living Television. And this shirt Martha actually gave to me. I got a hand-me-down from Martha Stewart. And the reason that I'm doing this with Lisa is because Martha Stewart was the first person that turned me on to like, you know, crazy chickens, the, the Aracuna and the Silkies and, you know, the little beautiful eggs. Oh, Lisa, yes, show us some of those. Oh. Who yep. knew? I mean, before Martha Stewart, very few people knew about those beautiful eggs. Isn't that the truth? No, that's the truth. And I saw her. We had just started raising chickens back in 2009. I saw her on TV, either her show where she was a guest on some show. Mm -hmm. And she had all these beautiful blue eggs and these chickens. And even though I had chickens as a kid, our chickens all laid brown eggs. I had no idea that they laid other color eggs. And I was like, I need to find me some, some blue egg laying chickens. Like I was on a quest and yeah, now I have like the whole rainbow, but yeah, it was absolutely Martha and her blue chickens. And I was like, how can you grow up with chickens your whole entire life and never know that there are chickens that lay blue eggs? I had no idea. It's crazy. Right, I know. Well, and then like on um, the little silkies, they're like these little tiny birds and with their fancy feet and stuff. I mean, Martha's, uh, Martha's chicken coop was called the Palais de Poulet. The chicken palace, which of course Martha's chickens have a chicken palace, right? Of course. Yeah. 
<laughs> God bless her. God bless her. Well, let's talk about, okay. So you love to cook. You love to be in the kitchen. You love being, you love the eggs more than the layer. You love the result more than the, than the layer. So yeah. how did you come about developing your recipes? I mean, you've got a huge selection. This isn't just breakfast. I mean, there's a lot of breakfast, but this is a lot more. So let's talk about like how, how your recipe development came about. Yeah, when I first started thinking about it, of course, I have my family recipes. I have recipes right. that I make all the time because we do eat eggs like pretty much every day, sometimes every meal of the day. Um, but I wanted I've read a lot of other egg cookbooks and I really thought it was important at the beginning to start with the basic ways to cook eggs, you know, scrambled, poached, fried, whatever, and some tips that I've learned along the way. So I started with that. And then I wanted to include like a lot of classics, um, especially in the dessert area, pound mm -hmm. cake, angel food cake, lemon meringue pie, um, creme brulee, like those are things that don't really appear in a lot of cookbooks. Wow. And I love recipes that you almost could have like six ingredients and you mm -hmm. could make 40 recipes. Like if you have eggs, cream, butter, flour, sugar, you know, you're good to go for so many of the recipes. I, I don't like when you open a cookbook and there's a recipe that has eight ingredients that you'll never use in another recipe. Um, so I tried to keep with the, the kind of recipes that people would make and put into their regular rotation, you know, even the cardamom, which I'm Finnish. We love our cardamom. We love our I dill. Know you. But I have, I mean, I use cardamom in place of cinnamon. So I don't feel like if someone bought a jar of cardamom for a particular right. recipe, they would never use it again. I mean, I have it I in like eight that. recipes of my own, but you can sub it in for cinnamon for all kinds of recipes and in muffins and whatever. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's eggs Benedict. No cardamom in that. I love that. I love that. Sorry. I know I got distracted by that yummy yolk. <laughs> but um, you've got, there's just so many beautiful recipes. I love that idea about cardamom over cinnamon. A little cinnamon goes a long way for me. And yet I do love cardamom. And you're right. You Finns, you Finnish folk do love yourself some cardamom. I wonder how that we happens. We do. And people, whenever you use it, people will always say, what is that I'm tasting? Like, it's not something that people are maybe familiar with. So it gives baked goods, especially like a interesting flavor that people aren't quite sure mm -hmm. what it is, but I like it. It's more subtle than cinnamon, but yeah. So I tried a lot of like eggs Benedict and, you know, eggs in pots and all the, the classic recipes. And then some others that were just fun, like the toad in the hole or the eggs and butternut squash, or just, you know, uh, beet hash, things like that, that, uh, you know, were a little different, a little fun, but not so crazy that I couldn't see people making them. Oh, look at your squash. Holy I know. Look at those. That's a whole different kind of toad in the hole, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh, Lisa, that's genius. That's so genius. So you've got, after the evening chores have done and the chickens have gone home to roost, we've got egg drop soup, avago limino, Caesar salad, niswa salad, gnocchi, oh, carbonara. And it, golly, Moses, it really is different when you have good eggs. It's truth, Absolutely. Right? Yeah. I think a lot of people don't realize, you know, like a carbonara, like the eggs are the sauce, you know, they're the eggs, yeah. you can make your own hollandaise sauce, you can make your own Caesar dressing, you can make your own mayonnaise. I made marshmallows and marshmallow fluff and just all kinds of fun things, sprinkles. I mean, you know, buttercream frosting, royal icing, eggs are in everything. And I think people don't necessarily think about that when they have eggs. They just think of, right. you know, fried eggs, omelets, whatever. Well, then I would also say, too, I mean, you know, an, an egg is not an egg is an egg, right? Like if you have chickens that are out in the yard and running around and eating yummy stuff, uh, you know, the the egg is going to taste better than uh, than a factory farm commodity chicken. And unfortunately, some of us often have to get the factory farm commodity chickens. Not everybody is fortunate enough to have a little uh um, to you know, be able to keep chickens, but it is a big difference with, with, with real farm raised chicken eggs and then basically grocery store eggs. I mean, there's a huge, there, there is not only because they're out in the yard and they're, I mean, my chickens right now are out and they're probably decimating our, you know, flower beds that are just starting to come up, but, um, all my hostas and everything, but you oh, know, not only are they eating this great diet, 
um, the eggs are fresh. And that's something that you can't get from grocery store eggs. And when you crack a fresh egg, the white is so thick and the yolk stands up really nicely. So when you're frying an egg, that egg really just stays right there. It doesn't spread out in the pan. When you're poaching eggs, you know, people always say, oh, poached eggs, you have to do this, you have to do that. And I'm like, you really just have to use fresh eggs. If you use a fresh egg and drop it in the water, it just stays together. It's not going to end up. I do swirl the water just because it's kind of fun and pretty. And, yeah. you know, I make a little whirlpool and put the egg in. But that white is so thick in a fresh egg. And fun fact, every recipe in my cookbook, the photos were all done using my chicken's eggs. I loaded Aww. probably 400 eggs into my car and drove to Connecticut with them for two weeks of photo shoot. Holy moly, hot fudge. That is a yeah. lot of chicken it, eggs. But that was important to me. I hoarded them like forever. But, but that was really important to me because I wanted it to be like a genuine look at the recipes I make with my own eggs. I thought that was really important. Oh my gosh. Look at this beautiful thing, y'all. This is an egg yolk ravioli. That's a ravioli in with an egg inside of it with that tomato. Oh, honey, this is looks, this all looks delicious. So, okay, let's talk about the, uh, let's talk about some business parts. So you've got breakfast, you've got dessert, you've got dinner, you've got just tons of glorious, glorious, glorious photography. Um, all right. So this book is available everywhere. And I wanted to go ahead and ask, is there a, is there a bookstore? Cause we want people to order your book. Is there a bookstore that um, folks can um, reach out to, to get a signed copy? Yeah, absolutely. I live in Maine. There is a, a small chain of six or seven bookstores called Sherman's, and I did sign books for them. They do ship nationwide, so you can go to the Sherman Books website, and if they don't have any copies in stock, they can order them. But yeah, definitely either Sherman's or visit your own local bookstore. Go to your library. Yeah. Um, you know, pretty much anywhere books are sold, though. Yay, yay, you. Well, that's awesome. And then, and I'm going to put your website up. We're going to, I want you to show us a little egg something, but um, I mean, you've got a ro super robust uh, uh, group on Facebook. You've got a bajillion Instagram followers. You've got YouTube. You've got a whole entire community. How is your, how is your community of chicken uh, tenders, you know, like the people, <laughs> not the meat? I didn't mean to say that. How are your group of chicken farmers re reacting to your beautiful book? Yeah, they're excited. I had a lot of people ask if I would write a cookbook and I have some recipes on my blog. I sort of was like a, like a closet food blogger. Like I always wanted to be, but knew I would never, it's so competitive. And I knew that chicken keeping was really where, you know, my, my strength lay. Um, but yeah, it's like tons of people with tons of eggs and they have been super excited, which is really, really nice. Um, I mean, who couldn't be, you know, even if you don't have chickens, like you said, you eat eggs probably. Oh, I know does. it. I know it. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, although I found that fresh eggs feel poorly. That is the truth. So the, people say that all the time. Do you agree? They say that all the time. And the problem is then they say, just let your eggs get old and then they'll peel well, which is true because air has had time to get in. It pushes the membrane away from the shell, but air gets in and it makes a dip in one end. It's an air right. sac, and that's the air that a baby chick breathes before it hatches. So as the egg ages, more and more air gets in, and your egg starts to dip. So if you're making deviled eggs or hard-boiled eggs, you're not going to get an egg shape. You're going to get the dip. Right. Not pretty. So in my book, I share my secret. Instead of boiling your eggs, steam them. Put them in a colander. Put them in a double boiler. Just steam them over simmering water for 12 minutes right into ice water when they're peel cool enough to peel. Even eggs laid that morning peel perfectly. It's some kind of eggy magic that happens, I, science I that I don't understand. Matter. But the other benefit, sometimes when you boil eggs, you know, if it's on too high, they bounce around and they knock into each other and they crack. Well, when they're steaming, they're just sitting quietly in the little basket and you don't get broken eggs. So that's my secret. That secret alone is worth the price of the book, even though I, I just told you all. No, <laughs> no. I know. Well, it's Chef Matthew Deaton, right? Can you believe it? How many times, how many damn bull that I mean there are so many times I've started to make deviled eggs and wound up with egg salad <laughs> yes absolutely <laughs> right yep. because it's like they're just so ugly and pocked and all that kind of stuff and I've heard people talk about baking soda in the water and vinegar in the water which makes sense that it would start to break down the the, the shell itself but if but you're saying I can basically take a freshly laid egg that morning and steam mm -hmm. it and it will peel mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, sister, y'all heard it here first. Now, this look at this. 
Uh, I've learned something big. That's awesome. This is a good, this is it. And then here, uh, of course, Cynthia does it. That's how I do it. And this is my dear friend, Cynthia. And we've got, um, oh, I do fresh eggs in an Instapot and they come out. Perfect. People have said that I don't have an Instapot. I don't even have a crock pot. I have like my KitchenAid mixer and a skillet. I mean, I'm like really old school when it comes to kitchen stuff. I have hardly anything that plugs in, but I have heard in an Instapot. And I think it's the same thing because that is steaming, right? Yeah, it's, it's yeah. kind of like the same. It's like pressure cooking slash steaming. So yeah, yeah. So was, it's sort of like the same. I don't like, know what the eggy magic is, but that that steam, it's it just it works. I, I love I love the eggy magic part. All right, I'm gonna show this book again, y'all. Absolutely gorgeous, perfect time of year. Um, Lisa, will you show us? I asked Lisa if she could show us some 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 eggy magic in her <laughs> favorite skillet. Yes. So I make a lot of omelets, obviously. I cook a lot of eggs. I don't like Teflon or nonstick. I love my enameled cast iron. And this is a lighter one. So I actually can, you know, like for an omelet, you need to be able uh -huh. to like flip it and turn it. So yep. shallow, perfect. Um, but yeah, so okay. I can do this without. Of course, I turned on the wrong burner because I don't use this side of my stove. <laughs> So yeah, so um, eggs cook super fast. So I think a mistake people make is having the heat too high. You want to cook eggs on a low heat because just a matter of seconds, they can go from being perfect to overcooked. Yeah, especially like scrambled eggs. Um, you want to take them off the heat when they're still kind of wet because even, you know, when you flip it over and put it on the, the plate and bring it to the table, they're going to be cooked. So I don't like to overcook my eggs. You want to do it on low heat. Um, and then you can use olive oil, you can use butter, you can use baking grease, you can use, you know, whatever you want in your pan. Um, and then once it heats up, which I'm not going to make you all wait till it heats up, but you want to crack your egg, always on a flat surface. That's yes! another mistake. People, even chefs, I see it all the time on cooking shows. They crack the egg on the corner of the counter, of the edge of the bowl or the pan. You risk pushing pieces of eggshell, bacteria that's on that shell right into the egg. So you always wanna crack your egg on a flat surface and then break it. Never crack your egg on the edge of your stand mixer bowl when that mixer is running. Don't ask me how I know, but if that paddle catches the egg, you are never gonna get the shells out of that batter. It's gone. No, you will not. That's <laughs> so awesome. flat surface, crack your egg. Because it's fresh, it just sits nicely in the pan. And then I thought this was a lemon, but it was actually a very pale orange. I love making um, lemon or citrus fried eggs. I just put a couple citrus slices in the pan with the egg while it's frying and they sort of caramelize and you get a little acidity from the citrus. It's beautiful. And when you plate it, if you plate them, you know, with the caramelized side, side up, it's really, really pretty. Um, so that's like one of my super simple Easy recipes, just something different if you're tired of plain old fried eggs every day. Um, oh, and I love that because that acid with that richness of the yolk. I mean, I'm I, well, hell, it's a hollandaise. It's, it's essentially a decent. It's a super. It's a holiday in the plate. I, I don't really like. Um, I like my fried eggs over easy more so. I don't necessarily eat them fried. Um, you know. But they are prettier if you don't flip them. Obviously, if no, you flip them, no, they're no, not no. as pretty. Well, we have so a wait. question. Let me ask you this question while you're cook while that's cooking. Sue, Ooh, you see it? I get, oh. I get fresh eggs near. Oh, look how beautiful that is. All right, that's way too hot for my hand. Okay. Um, yeah. So I mean, the egg pretty much is cooked. Uh huh. That quickly, and you can see how beautiful the yolk is. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, I want that so bad. I can't stand it. <laughs> All right, we have a question here. I get fresh eggs from a lady near me. If I wash them, how long do they keep? So let's do a little egg 101 here for for our, for the folks watching. Okay, so if you're getting eggs from your own chickens or from a neighbor or even maybe a farmer's market, if they haven't been washed, they don't have to be refrigerated. So I leave eggs out on the counter like all the time because when you're baking, you need room temperature eggs and I always forget to take them out. So if you don't wash your eggs, they can be left out on the counter at room temperature for probably three weeks, maybe a month. Yeah. Um, and then in the fridge, they're gonna last even longer. So if you're not gonna use your eggs within a couple of weeks, put them in the fridge unwashed. Um, if your eggs have been washed, all commercial eggs have to be washed according to uh, 
the laws in this country, this weird yeah. country that doesn't trust raw milk or unwashed eggs. Um, the rest of the world, they don't wash oh their God. eggs and they leave them out and everyone's fine. But yeah, in this country, in France, you never, ha I mean, eggs just sat out forever. I mean, it was like a, a brick, you know what I mean? Like a, nothing. We, no. Butter too. I just leave my butter out. I don't even have a butter bell. I just leave butter out at room temperature, whatever. Um, yeah, so in this country, commercial eggs have to be washed, so they have to be refrigerated. So if you bought them at the grocery store, you have to put them in the fridge. But if you have your own chickens, if the eggs are a little dirty and you want to wash them, just rinse them in warm water and then put them in the fridge. Because once they've been washed, it removes that coating. I mean, it's such a shame because the egg, when it's laid, the hen puts a protective coating on that egg, the last thing she does before she lays it. That coating keeps out air, it keeps out bacteria, it keeps the egg from getting infected with anything, it keeps the egg fresher longer. So washing that coating off is defeating the whole purpose of the egg. It's so another reason nature, to raise your own chickens. Literally. It's literally messing with mother nature, isn't it? Yes, I mean, exactly. Yeah. Wow, so you're, okay, so, so there you go. So if, if, if someone is getting eggs from their, from their own hens or from a neighbor and they haven't been washed, then it's okay at room temperature. If you're getting them from a farmer's market, most of the farmers that I know that raise eggs to sell them, they often wash them and they do what's called candling mm -hmm. and to, I guess, to check them. And right. um, I think that most of them, at least in Georgia, they're washed. So then, then someone would need to refrigerate, refrigerate. And back. the laws do, if you're going to sell your eggs, the laws do vary state by state. So you do really right. need to check your state egg laws, check with your local extension service, because if you're selling at a farmer's market, some of the eggs do have to be kept, you know, at a certain temperature. Some you have to wash, some states you're not allowed to wash. So every state is very different on what they require yeah. for, <coughs> for, um, yeah. So I would ask if you're buying eggs from anywhere, sorry, other than the supermarket, no, I would definitely water. ask. Let's have, let's have <coughs> That's a good idea. Oh, Lisa, this has just been so wonderful. So, um, uh, fifth generation chicken keeper, founder of the popular blog, Fresh Eggs Daily. And it says, you know, a thing or two about eggs. And I, I just wholeheartedly agree that a beautiful recipes, um, very simple. I love your, uh, look at that y'all little, little, steamed eggs, little eggs in pots. Oh, that looks delicious. Um, you have taken, uh, it's a hundred fabulous recipes to use eggs in unexpected ways, but I feel like you've just taken this like cornerstone of the kitchen and you really um, celebrate it and honor it in this incredibly beautiful book, Lisa. Congratulations. Oh, thanks. I really appreciate it. And that's what I wanted to do. I think the egg doesn't get enough credit. I no, really you're right. You're right. And so I saw yesterday on Facebook, your PBS show is being taken into more and more markets. So if people want to watch you or learn more about you, I'm going to send them to your website, fresheggsdaily.com. Yes. On my website, I have links to my books, my blog. Um, I have a product line of supplements for chickens also, but also my TV show, which is airing on public television. It's rolling out across the country. It's already on about 100 stations and it should be on closer to 200 stations very soon. So check your listings. It's called Welcome to My Farm. And I do a little cooking. I hang out with my chickens a little. I do some gardening. I visit local farms. So it's just a fun family show oh, if you're just looking nice. for something a little different. Oh, that's so nice. Well, Lisa, mm -hmm. I can't thank you enough for being on today and, and sharing your beautiful book with us. No, the pleasure was all mine. I, I'm just, I'm thrilled. Yay. Awesome. Well, listen, you have a great weekend. I hope uh, you're probably still in mud season up in Maine. <laughs> yes, we are. There's a lot of mud. <laughs> There's no, the spring, mud season is before spring, y'all, in New England. Like the spring is a little bit later. Right now, it's just like it's like a bunch of mud. So thank you so much for coming on today. And you have a great weekend. OK, thanks. You too. OK, thank Bye. you. Bye. Oh, my gosh. Wasn't well, that nice? Y'all, such, such, such a beautiful book. Please go to my Instagram page. Um, you're going to like me, like Lisa. Make sure you follow her. I mean, just it's, it's y'all, I see lots of folks in this business. I see lots of cookbooks and um, not all of them are this good. So two wholehearted thumbs up on this gorgeous book. I want to thank y'all for watching Cookbooks with Virginia and uh, I'll be back next week. I've got some changes coming. I feel like it's kind of challenging to do on Friday sometimes. So I'm going to be putting it out there to you to ask you 
to help me uh, make some changes in the show because I really do enjoy it and I'm getting lots of feedback that you do too. Um, and thank you so much for watching. Um, uh, happy Passover, happy Easter, and bon appetit, y'all. Bye-bye now.